Okay, all right. Kyle. Okay, so we're up to um, item nine, three waters activities from November until January and February. Brent, would you like to come and tell us what we're up to, please? Take it that the uh, take it that the report is read. Um, quite happy to answer any questions resulting from it. Um, just just in summary, though, for this period uh, running up to February, um, looking at some of the extraordinary things that Three Waters have had to do, and um, I guess react to over that period of time, including uh, new water regulations coming into effect in November still um, continuing to recover from the treatment plant fire, which we now got those aerators up and running, um, continuing to have staff providing input into the reforms, um, and then the, the usual ones of cost escalations. We have our ongoing leaking pipes, which we are reacting to every day, and our backflow water meter and um, excess water charges. So it it's sort of puts a bit of a context around the, the issues that Three Waters has been dealing with over the last four months or so. So happy to take any questions. And um, Aaron? Yeah. Thanks, Brent. Hey, given that we're in the public domain here, when the announcement was made last week that the Three Water changes would now be affordable, what do you take that to mean? Um, that's I think not you a, might have to ask the minister question. <laughs> so it wasn't obvious to You've you. Got any other questions here? Right? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I do. On the on the water leaks, because it is a bit of a bane of some people's existence across the city. Are the number of repairs outnumbering the number of reports yet? And have they been for a while? Are the number of repairs outnumbering the number of oh, reported leaks? Up. So there's a catch up, as in the two we are, are going to meet up. at some point. Yep. Any time when, like, is there an approximate date, like a month of a particular year, where we think that we'll be caught up and then just deal with what comes up on a day by day basis? I think we're pretty close now. Um, the last I heard, we had about 160 outstanding, um, and of those, I think it was about 90 that just needed reinstatement. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's coming down. But wow. bear in mind, you get these with the, with the deterioration of pipes. You do get these water leaks. Yeah, you get fresh ones every day. So yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, you just don't yeah. know where they come next. Yeah, yeah, there are definitely ups and downs. And one of the other things that we're about to start is our annual um, leak detection program. So that will generate more work. So yep. depending on the volume of jobs coming through there, we we'll just need to manage that carefully. Right, that'll be preemptive work, though, won't yeah, it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, then Mark, then Sam. Uh, Aaron asked my question, um, so we're okay, good. Good, good. Uh, Sam? Uh, yeah, thanks, Brent. Uh, just around um, Tamara Atawai in terms of the chlorine exemptions, can you just talk through, I mean, I, I know they've said they'll, they'll sort of look at 55, 65 days for, for considering them. What are the, because I guess anecdotally out in the, sort of talking to other councils around the country, there's sort of a concern that they're potentially not on top of everything as yet. How are we finding them to deal with? and? Are we comfortable that they'll actually turn stuff around in the timelines they've, they've outlined? Well, they've had it a while. Tim's been in touch with them, but bear in mind they've had their hands full with uh, what's happened up through Gisborne, but we've heard nothing yeah. yet. No, we haven't had uh, We're expecting in the next wee while there'll be a response. Um, in general terms, operationally, they've been good to deal with. So from a, um, you know any incidents um, they've been on top of, we've been providing regular quarterly updates to them. Um, so I've got no no issues operationally. Okay. So it's just that clarity around the exemptions and, mm. and what that will be. And we, we think we might get a steer in the next wee while. Is that what we're we're hoping so because it's um, it, it will have a, a big impact on us. Yeah. So I guess the, the, at, at what point, and maybe it's a question for you, Dawn, is at what point do we, um, and I don't mean stop waiting, I don't mean that in that way, but what I'm saying is at what point does it, do you get involved as chief exec to the new chief executive and, and look at that? Obviously, uh, councillor, I'm guided by my technical staff. We, we, because we're anticipating it imminently, 
Mm. I think it would be fair to say if we got into May and we still haven't heard anything, then I would be picking the phone up. Yep. Okay, uh, Mac. Thank you. Um, thanks for the update. Um, sort of following on from um, Councillor McDonald's question there around Tamata Arawai and the outstanding um, application for exemption that we've got for is it Brooklyn's and Kyenga at this stage. Um, do we have any time frame as to when we might expect um, that? And then I guess as a follow up on that, are we working on preparing other um, catchments to then follow on behind quickly as um, further exemption applications? Yeah, so I think we've just answered that. We answered question. the first one. So, yeah. you know, if it's not, not here by May, then I think um, the C is going to chase that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yes, we, are, we have other exemptions drafted. Um, we're largely waiting for the results of that application just to see how they're assessing it mm -hmm. and then to tailor any future applications once we've got that. Very good, yeah, because it's, I guess, for each councillor around this table, it's a, a burning issue that we keep getting asked as to when's the chlorine getting out of our water. So yeah. I it's know a Dawn burning issue uh, across the place. Yeah. Think, you know, to, be, to be fair to Tomata Arawai, they will have a large number of requests for exemptions, yep. and then obviously what's happened in North Island. Uh, so we're trying to be reasonable, but my colleagues are absolutely right. There's little point in us submitting any more until we understand the outcome of the two that are in, because we may need to adjust the work and what we've done before we submit any more. Otherwise, I'm asking them to do redundant work, which isn't fair. Very good. And I guess another question around the leaks. Um, at what sort of point do we trip a, a mains replacement as opposed to just keep patching? Um, repeated links down that same main water line. It's uh, yeah, that's an interesting one because um, we we do get reports of repeated leaks, but they they're not necessarily at the same point every no. time. Uh, they could be on a valve and then on a, a pipe. Uh, it just gives the impression of being in the same area. Um, and the team do assess uh, the number of repairs in a particular area and then feed that back into the system to for renewals. Very good, because I'm just I notice around my um, area of there's one particular water line that seems to have a good half dozen patches. It looks like each joint in the pipe all the way down. So yeah, yes. and have a look at that if you want to see the details through. Thank you, Mark. Good, thank you, Sarah. Thanks. A couple of things. I noticed we've had um, some of those uh, notifications made to Tomata Arawai for some um, non-compliances. What was the response? So with the Pigeon Bay devotional. Um, graffiti and West Christchurch, the ones we had to notify between October to December. It says that we notified them, but doesn't say what the response from Tomata Arawai was. I can't speak specifically to those ones, but yeah. in general terms, um, they, they, they quite often just accept the notification and know that we're doing things to resolve it, depending on what that specific non-compliance was, whether it was a technical non-compliance or a, something that actually you know, caused the water to be unsafe. Okay, thanks. And um, the other one is on, you know, we've got a, a large program of work happening across the three waters, and as a council, sometimes we are, you know, constrained by deliverability, those kind of things. Are we taking every opportunity to deliver as much as we can, as quickly as we can, and not just sticking to what's budgeted? If something's able to be brought forward or if it's progressing more quickly, we're doing that work, or are we just yes. just sticking to... The answer to that is yes. We, um, in fact, we were just having another conversation around that this morning. Um, from time to time, projects do get held up, so we look more globally across the Three Waters program to see if there's something else ready to go. We've um, made a few changes in terms of, for example, those uh, lateral repairs, being able to cluster them up and delivering them in a different way, and looking at design build options as well. So th there's a number of things we're doing to to push the program forward. Yeah. And is there anything that we could do to deliver the program more quickly? Um, being that you know, over time things have been degrading, we want to make progress to upgrade you know, the, the overall average level of the, the networks. I, I think the things that we've, we've done and are continuing to do, we'll start to see the effect of those. It, it, it's, it's a gradual thing because you're building up capability at the same time in, in, the, in the resources that we use. So um, we're already seeing that, um, for example, in the, um, in the laterals program, we're, we're 
we're right up to the mark on that. There's a few other other projects that we're going well we may be able to to hold that it's not quite ready planning wise so we'll switch the money across so things are starting to, to uh, increase in terms yeah. of deliverability and is there anything that we could do as council or is any you know that, that would help um, enable that work to happen more quickly I so think any the, processes I think the time, and stuff or yeah, I think the time I think the time to look at that is when we prioritise and debate that with the LTP coming up because that's the time when you may want to shift the focus from one area to another and that will accelerate the works that way. Yeah, but, but shifting focus from one area to another isn't delivering all of it more quickly? It's, it's around prioritisation. Yeah. yeah that's, okay. that's really where, where our resources can um, um, focus. Okay, but you're not yeah. being held up by budget. You're delivering as much as you could possibly d deliver, not just delivering to yeah. budget. This, uh, looking at the figures this year, we're, uh, we're tracking pretty well to deliver everything on budget. It's, it, it, this year there's been, in some areas, some um, hold-ups in terms of working out a few things around consenting and bits and pieces like yeah. that, but we're getting through those now, so um, no, I don't have any, any problems there. And Thanks. I'm sure Councillor Thompson will, uh, is very aware we have, within our capital programme, reporting that goes to F&P, uh, actually, we did put significantly more resources into Three Waters because of the request. That has uplifted the performance, so we are spending more than we were in previous years. Mm. Uh, mm. And that, we're actually seeing an improvement on the delivery as well. Mm. Okay. Melanie? Uh, I've got a few different ones. Um, just following from um, Mark's question about um, repairs versus replacement, because um, I have had a few it was only two different people but one has talked about a number of repairs being in exactly the same location and I understand that they may be different things that appear to be the same but once it's getting past half a dozen plus more it, it, it's sometimes I well in that particular case anyway I feel like maybe the replacement should have happened a little bit quicker I know it's going to be replaced now so it's um, is there a process to sort of speed that up because I know City Care report back and, and say we think this should be replaced but yeah so uh, is there a way to sort of make that happen more quickly sometimes? Yeah we are talking with uh, City Care at the moment around um, just what you're talking about and whether or not rather than doing repairs they can look to replace so we're just trying to work through a criteria for them uh, that gives them the authority to just go ahead and do that replacement. Right. Um, the larger mains are a little bit more difficult but the, the the shorter bits of pipe and the sub mains that we know are of a certain age, um, those are something that we can certainly look at replacing. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, and then on the um, table on page um, 6 of the report, or 46 of the agenda, there's a few different things about um, potential areas of non-compliance with the drinking water standards, and I just wanted to understand about those, because the top one's about um, water treatment plants and talking about having... UV treatment systems where maybe the wellheads are below ground. So is that a sort of temporary solution? Because I thought we were moving all wellheads above ground. I'd right. have to look into the detail of that um, in these. I'm wondering if there's, uh, this is something we can come back to you on because it gets quite complex. Okay. Some yeah, of the reasons might... for these non-compliances. Right, and my other questions were about sort of below that and the um, exemptions. Um, for various things about online monitoring and, and contact time. Yeah, so a number of those things are new requirements, uh, yeah. so we've never had to do those before. So uh, when when the rules came out and the date was set that we needed to be compliant by, yeah. there was no way that we could be compliant right. because we haven't done the installation of So it's a temporary UV exemption and, until such time. Yeah, is it that is. The yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think Tamara ROI are conscious of that and they're conscious of um, the Christchurch supply being complex yeah. and it's going to take time to get all this stuff installed. Right, okay, yeah, cool, thanks. Can I suggest, uh, please, Tim, that we do a proper briefing note because you're right of the complexities of the changes and give some live examples about what it was like, bef what, what the requirements were before and what the differences are because I think that would help. Okay, Pauline. Yeah, look, just following on from Mel, I was going to ask about the non-compliance as well. And in your, um, if you can explain in the, on the page 46, 
estimated duration of non-compliance five years after approved in the LTP. Is that the last LTP or the next one coming up? Yeah, okay, so that, that's, that's something that I think we should probably pick up at the, um, at the briefing, because it's all to do yep. around source water and being bacterial, having bacterial compliance versus protozoa compliance and, and how we can achieve that. Uh, UV is one of those things, class one water is another one of those things, which is effectively proving that our source water is a really high standard that's going to take us on a particular well, it could take us 12 months to achieve. Yes, yeah, so if this is responding to the standards which came into effect in November, then I would say this is for the next LTP, I guess. So it's looking like we're going to require considerable budget to achieve these um, standards. Depen and it sounds to me like, um, uh, as how long is a piece of string? How long is it going to, are we going to be allowed to be non-compliant for? That's the question, isn't it? And, and I'm also um, just want to point out that even if an entity was in place now, they wouldn't be able to do this any quicker anyway, would they? It's a yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that was um, my main question. It, it does say in here too that um, we're 1.2 million over budget in our OPEX as well. So yeah. that's a considerable overrun, isn't it? it and it's, a, it's also a reflection on some of the things I mentioned at the start. And you know, when, we, yeah. when we get things like burst mains or non-compliances, it's, it's stuff, it's not like we can't do it. We, we have to do it, whether it's in budget or not. It's public health you're talking about here. So um, yeah, it's, it's just an indication of the volume of work and the type of work that three waters have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, my turn. Mm -hmm. um, are all the aerators in the ponds going now? Is that right? Yes. So the other day I got a, a ring from a, a resident, not who you would think it is, but someone else, <laughs> saying to me that the, the <laughs> smell was particularly bad. Would that be because the aerators have just been livened up and there's a bit of a, a dozy part of the pond that might have been getting a bit more livened up than what it should have been? Would that be fair to say or not? So we did put, put an article out the other day. The, there was concern when we turned them on that it may stir the sludge up from the bottom, uh, but uh, we were pleasantly surprised because we have, we have monitoring right around all those ponds now, and um, we were pleasantly surprised at, at the, the minimal effect it did have. So the odours that you might have been wrong about may have been coming from something else, I don't know. But as of last night, uh, reading all the um, oxygen levels in the ponds and what have you, the, um, they've now turned all the indicator lights back to green for all ponds, Excellent. whereas some of them were sitting at orange. Thank so you, thank um, it's had a much better effect than what we'd even hoped for. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, Tyler? Yeah, I've got you, Jan. Kia ora. I'm talking about uh, renewals here and the relationship that you have with transport around um, streamlining the work so you don't have to go there once. Can you talk to us a bit more about that? It's just for, for public knowledge. Well, as much as possible, we do try and align our programs, but on top of that, we have, um, we have some reactive funding in the Three Waters budget to, you know, if, if they're part way through a uh, street repair, that we can react to that and, and um, sort those issues out as well. So um, there's quite a bit of effort goes into aligning and getting things in the right order. Doesn't always um, come off, as we know, but um, it's one of our priorities when we're going through the LTP prioritisation, sure. just to make sure that the interdependencies and the alignment. So some jobs may be pushed forward or pushed back depending on whichever department can or cannot deliver? If we can do them, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to take this offline to um, around Whareinui Road, maybe getting an update with that, if yeah, that's okay. right. We can do that. No worries. Cheers. Thank you. Um, Tyrone. Got it. Um, so just looking through the, the table of potential non-compliances, like after you get after Christchurch, it's like a roll call of Banks Peninsula communities. So I guess what I want to know is, like, for if, for if any one of those things were to, to be realised, any of those potential non-compliances were to be realised. Are we in for a, like, a, like a budget blowout on any, in any kind of 
given, like in terms of like what we're currently planning for, are we in for some some um, s some surprises, a la O'Kane's Bay? I have to take that one away. I think. And we'll okay. Have to go through and have a look at it. Right. Um, but there's risk. I mean, I don't. Is, you don't need to put a there is there is a number on risk. it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There is. So basically, we've got a pipeline of things that we're planning for. Any one of these probably likely can would 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 add to the to the size of that it would, and pipeline. It, it, it also depends on the direction that we take to yep. address a particular issue. So something like online monitoring, we've already got projects in, in play for that. Um, if it's UV sterilisation or anything else, it, it, it's yeah. There's many factors that we need to consider. Okay, cool. Um, just another one, Phil, if that's okay. Different topic slightly. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of um, logging activity around the peninsula at the moment that's damaging roads and water mains and all that sort of stuff. Do we have any um, any any record? Like it seems to be quite um, intense at the moment. Maybe more than 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 in other years. I mean that's just my my perception. I don't know how true that is. But is there any recourse that we have there? Like it seems to be really putting a lot of strain on our resources to fix a lot of those burst uh, mains affected by like really, really, you know, heavy, heavy trucking. Is that, a, is that something you've noticed I, I th or? I think a high level answer, a simple answer to that is if we, if we know where the damage has come from, yes, we would be following it up. Um, but um, at the same time, um, if it's water supply, for example, we, we have to get in straight away and do something about it. But it, it's like any damage on any other council asset through the city, if we know about it and we're sure of the cause and we have proof, then we can chase it. Because I know that, um, uh, I think it was in New Plymouth that they brought in like a targeted rate to logging companies, didn't they? It wasn't very popular, but it was, is that something that we'd ever think about doing? I don't know. Okay. I don't worry about it. All right, cheers. Okay, um, Yanni, and then Kelly. Cool, uh, thank you. Um, so just um, best case scenario, when we can take chlorine out of the um, places where we're currently putting it in? Are we looking at three to five years? Or I was just confused reading the report because there's all these new requirements that are going to take years and years. So things like age, age of the water, mm -hmm. source water, which, I mean, for the past five years we've heard that we're testing and we needed to wait another year and, you know, it takes a long time and then the standards have changed so now apparently the work we were doing before is no longer good enough. We now need to do another three years of continuous monitoring. Can, can you give us just a sense, because what I didn't get from the report is, I appreciate there's things that we've asked for an exemption on, yep. and yet we won't meet those, obviously, within certain time frames. Um, but there's other things that seem that we have to do before we could even be considered for an exemption, and I didn't quite well, understand so the difference between the two so requirements. There's a, there's a couple of things there, and it really does hinge on this uh, exemption application for Brooklyn's Kainga. Once we get the response back to that, it will, it will give the city a fairly good steer as to where the regulator is or what they're thinking. Um, in terms of that source water you talked about, do you want to outline the time frame there as to what it would take to get Class 1 water, for example, the monitoring required? Yep, and, and we can cover all of that off. Do that in this briefing? Do that briefing Thank as you. well, yeah. if you yeah. mind. Yeah. Thank you, mate. I and think as the Deputy Mayor was saying, it's... it's lastly... Um, so I just had a... So, sorry. No, I've got a few more questions. Sorry, um, so I was just increasingly concerned to read through the report that the maintenance in regards to city care um, was, um, you know, there was extra money being required, there was performance issues in terms of the contract, there was data that seemed to be missing. So, you know, page 48, city care contract costs are driving overspend against budget. Um, there's there's other references throughout the report um, around not having the data available to measure. Um, so, page 61, since the new contract started on 1st of September 2022, significant number of changes in how we manage data between a sales and contractor, city care. Um, you know, we're currently working through the final validation, which means we'll be able to uh, monitor. And then it goes on to say, unfortunately, this work has been delayed and full response time performance reporting now be available next three waters and the question is coming soon well no the so the, the the question is in regards to just a high level understanding of 
what's happening with city care around the budget blowouts and the oh sorry the budget over overspend and the data that we're getting from the contractor can you give us a sort of a sense yeah, of so the, is it they're not performing as a contractor is it it issues Peter, manage the question mate. Yeah. yeah yeah so uh regarding budget it's not that city here is blown the budget it's that uh reactive repairs have um contributed towards that the data question is around uh, previously city care would provide information to us and report we wanted to shift that and so it's actually council providing that information um, to our own team so that's in the final stages of being uh, finalized but it's so, uh, meeting today on that actually so can you just tell me on page yeah, 25 we've got to get moving on there uh, Yanni, sorry. sorry can i just get a question just a final question can i just get um a new maintenance contract city care commence first of september it's underway a number of issues continue to be on out to make sure the aims of the contract are met but then it says some of the maintenance works are well behind schedule particularly tributary waterways and stormwater basins a remedial plan to catch up on the work is now in place can we get a copy of that remedial plan and can you give us a sense of um when you think we'll get back to um getting getting on schedule yeah happy to and uh, bearing in mind that this report is reasonably old now so um the up-to-date numbers will be coming through from a water leaks perspective thank you tim great answer kelly <laughs> Um, it's not, it's yeah, thanks, um, thanks, guys. Um, first, just I, want to, I just want to say thanks for um, sending you know some of your stuff along to the Tenby Place Newport uh, Street um, meeting and answering questions for the residents. You know, for obviously something that's been going on for a long time, and appreciate uh, the advice uh, you've given, the attention you put on that. Um, just in terms of stormwater, I see uh, there's an item here for Martians Road Canal Reserve Drain, and there'd been issues with um, timber supply. Um, so, what I wanted to know is, uh, your spending looks like 8.3 million on this. Is it going to be enclosed, or are you just renewing the timber in the drain and leaving it as it was? Do you have the I details? I don't from know it? the details of it, and I'm presuming it'll be from the. Pit running north from Kiwi 2 Drive potentially. Uh, no, I'm, uh, on, on, it's on Martians Road, sort of heading from Kiwi 2 Drive, yeah, north, sorry, north, to yeah. uh, S Preston's Road, I think it is. So, a bit of history on that is the, the piece, piece heading south from there we piped a number of years ago. Right. Um, because it was right beside residential sections and it was full of rubbish, all that sort of stuff. So that, that, that made a lot of sense. However, the downside of piping is you lose the, um, the ability of subsoil drainage. So a, a timber drain is not only a, a conduit, but it also allows the water to come out of the, the soils and get taken away. So yeah. yeah, the type of price you're looking at there is because not only would we have to price it, uh, to pipe it, but we'd have to put in subsoil drainage as well and a number of other things. Uh, potentially, it's a it's also linked to safety on the road and that type of thing because it's quite close there. Yeah, um, it is. That, that's as, I don't know the specifics of the project, but historically, that's what we used to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just thought that yeah, they are quite sort of I don't know they are, they look dangerous, <laughs> you know, because yeah. they're sort of they're actually extremely efficient yes. in terms of Christchurch because our forefathers decided to plonk us in the middle of a swamp. Yeah, um, and I imagine the so, Martians yeah. that would be. Uh, yeah, really useful to have those. So, and, and, and they're very cost effective in yeah. terms of um, you renew some timbers after a few, after I think about 30 odd years or something like that, replace broken struts on the top, whereas pipes are you know, very, very expensive. Okay, good to know. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, thank you for all the questions. I'll now ask for someone to move that, and that is Kelly and seconded by Mark. So, any debate? Well, I just really want to quickly say. Um, And I really want to give a shout out to Tim and his team for the work that they've done around Birdlings Flat. It's just been exemplary in the way that the community engagement, uh, the communication, just just a really strong work there. And actually, that the team does all around the peninsula. So um, I just wanted to to just acknowledge that. And um, you know, um, thank you, thank you. Cheers, Mark. Yeah, just like to um, again say thank you to the team. You guys do a huge amount of work in our city in the Three Waters and you know, I think as, as a council and as, as ratepayers we'd like to say a huge thank you.
Righto, and with that, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Thank you. Carried. Good.